Let us look at the Tylee Fang hip rig. This is Tylee Fang. I have the exact same hip rig in all the characters, but we'll be looking at the Tylee Fang character to see how that uh, is achieved today. So you'll want to have a good range of motion from uh, you know, knees all the way up to the chest until the knees are uh, all the way behind the body a little bit and the gluteus is all scrunched up there. And the way you, and oh, also I guess we'll want to make sure that we have, uh, we're able to do the splits, uh, get those all, you know, get the legs straight all the way apart and you know, get them all the way back together. You know, these, all these range of motion we're going to need. We achieve this with a thigh controller with two thigh bones that follow it. Uh, this is your typical uh, twist bone setup. So if you know what a twist bone is, go to town. Otherwise, we'll talk about it here in a second. We've got an adductor um, stretch to constraint on the inside of the thigh and two uh, stretch to constraint bones on the outside of the thigh, one that points to the back side of the hip and one that points to the front side of the hip. The adductor points to the pubic bone on, the, um, on whichever side it is. Now the gluteus muscle is really complicated. It's got four different drivers. Uh, all the drivers care about uh, X, the rotation of the thigh on its X axis uh, and then uh, the delta of the angle between the thigh and the hip uh, joint. And the hip joint is this circle which is just a bone that uh, is always it's static. It doesn't move. It stays up and down and, and then you measure the angle between them to help with the driver of the gluteus. Now the gluteus does also have another bone on the inside which just helps the uh, automatic weight painting. I don't use weight painting so I use extra bones to extend the uh, weight of a given bone. And so if you are good at reading this should set you up. Uh, you have a twist bone set up and this is the top bone here and then there's another bone down here at the bottom that uh, copies the, uh, these two bones. Uh, lie along with the thigh control bone and then their twisting is more uh, or less depending on how far from the hip it is less when it's close to the hip. And this is important so that you can uh, parent these um, stretch two bones in the top part of her thigh to the uh, bone at the top of her thigh. You can see the relationship lines here going to the middle of her thigh. That's, the, that's that top bone that they are a child of. This is the uh, quick overview of what this rig looks like. Uh, so now if you want, uh, if you are good at reading, that should give you enough to get, uh, to get the idea of um, making a hip look reasonable. Now if you stick around for the next several minutes, we'll talk about all of this in detail. So let's start with the hip bones. Now these are the uh, bones that you would see on the external part of the body. This holds the shape of that hip bone here, and this holds the shape of this mass behind her hip, which doesn't move much, but does move a little bit as the uh, thigh rotates quite a lot. So let's grab her um, leg and then move it so we can see what's going on here. So first, let's look at these two bones here. What we're, what we're gonna notice is the hip bone itself does rotate. It has, if you look at the hip bone here, it does have a copy rotation constraint with the thigh, but a very small amount. And that's not anatomically correct, of course, as your thigh moves, your hip bone doesn't rotate, but things do happen there on the external uh, part of your body that um, does make rotating that uh, look slightly correct. On the back side, it is also copying the rotation of the thigh just on the x and z axis and a bit more influence. And so now let's watch these two bones as her uh, as her thigh rotates. So we'll grab this, grab this, and rotate from this one. So see that back bone is rotating quite a lot. The front one, the hip, you know, front hip bone is also rotating, but not nearly as much, just a little bit. And so this is uh, this is what you want to have. This is what you want uh, to get the, you know, deforms right at the very top front and back of the uh, hip area to deform correctly. So now let's look at the um, twist bone setup. Uh, it's very very simple and common, but we'll at least look at it, right? The, the idea is the top bone copies the location of control thigh R. Control thigh R is this bone that runs all the way down. The control bone is not deforming. Only this top of the bone and this thing down here that are copying those locations are deforming. So uh, this one, you know, it copies the location, so it puts it at the top. It copies the rotation, and it has a damp track to the knee. And so that way, it always points to the knee no matter what rotation it does. Then the next bone down, which is the bottom of her thigh, that one copies the location of the top of the thigh, and so it puts it at that halfway point every time. And then it copies the rotation of the uh, controller, and it does a damp track to the knee as well. So it's basically the same as the top one. Then, uh, as mentioned earlier, these um, these stretch two bones here are all children of this top one. Because this top one copies the rotation at only 0.3, that means these three uh, stretch two bones, as her um, as her leg rotates in and out, it doesn't. Those don't rotate in and out as much. So let's uh, take. Yeah, we'll just keep looking at this so you can kind of imagine what's happening there. So as I rotate her leg out, you can see the bones don't rotate as much as say her calf does. If you watch her calf, how much it rotates, and then watch this red bone, this red bone, this red bone here. Those don't rotate nearly as much, but they are rotating in the same direction um, and proportionally the same amount because they're uh, children of that top bone there. So then there's this hip joint. This hip joint doesn't do anything. It just it, it, its purpose in life is to help count calculate the, uh, the angle between the thigh and the hip. So as the thigh um, goes, say, into the splits or other angles besides just rotating forward and back like that, then we want to know what that, the difference of the angle is so that we can uh, do things with the gluteus. And so the gluteus, let's take a look at it before we do, let's like actually watch it move before we uh, look at its constraints and things. So the gluteus is this bone right here and then this other bone here that just extends its um, its uh, weight into the kind of inner side of her gluteus. So let's take a look at that as uh, her legs move. So um, if her legs are kind of going into splits, they will um, slightly move out and um, and they'll actually change their uh, size a little bit, which we'll show. I'll show you the formulas for that in a second. Uh, something really funny about this is I set this up long enough ago that I don't actually remember what the formulas do exactly. So I'm going to fudge through that a little bit when it happens. But this is the other thing. As her legs go back, look at these gluteus bones. That's, again, this one here and this one here. As her leg moves back, they start to move way out. And so that, uh, and then as they move forward, they don't move way in. And that, that is to say, as her legs go this way, the bones go way out here. But as her legs go this way, they don't go way in. There's, so there's a formula that keeps them from uh, moving too far into her body when it's going forward, but do move quite a bit out when her legs are back. So this gives her a really nice definition of her butt when, when her legs go back like that. And uh, usually it looks pretty good when one leg is back and the other one isn't, so you can actually see that deform happening. So uh, let's see. And then splits, we kind of already talked about, um, but we'll see the formulas here in a second. So uh, actually, let's start with the stretch two constraints on the adductor. The adductor is the inside of the thigh. And so as you can see, I got this mostly placed way down here. It doesn't stretch all the way up to the pubic bone. This is the bone that it is 
with stretching too. It only goes about to, you know, halfway, but it does have a stretch two constraint with some volume variation and, you know, if it's point eight, so like this is going to the cubic mode. You can just copy these values as a good starting point to kind of see what happens. Uh, I had to play with a lot of these parameters. As you can see, I'm only maintaining volume on the x-axis and I'm um, maintaining volume at, uh, you know, 2x. I'm capping the max volume at one. And so I played with these parameters a lot until they looked good, but I do not remember um, what happens if you leave these at default. It isn't pretty on this model, but it may end up being that you don't have to really tweak these at all and the defaults may end up working out pretty well for you. So then on the outside of the um, thigh, there is this uh, on the kind of front side of her thigh, which stretches to the back side of her hip. And so this one is stretching to this bone right here. So this bone is what I'm calling the uh, deaf hip bone back R, right? And so this one is stretching to deaf hip bone back R. <coughs> this one has much more default settings, except the influence is less than full. And it turns out uh, a lot of these uh, rigs, as you start adding more and more real, uh, real look to them, you'll end up having stretch two constraints with less than one influence almost every time. I very rarely have a full stretch two constraint. Um, so then this is, a, this is a bone that ends up being on the kind of front side of her thigh that is stretching to her hip. And so this is kind of helping. So remember earlier, the hip bone rotates a bit with the thigh that adds some of the realism to that area between the thigh and the, the front of the hip. But the remainder of it is this bone that's kind of at the top, you know, front of her thigh that stretches to that hip bone. So, um, and I don't know if I got highlighted, I do. So that is its parameters. As you can see, it's also fairly vanilla. I haven't changed it much other than to have less than full influence. Now we're going to get into the beast. The beast is her gluteus. The gluteus has two different uh, constraints, copy and rotation constraints. Really, it's one constraint, but it's just a copy and rotation on the x-axis by one amount and the y and z-axis on uh, by another amount, only slightly different. I bet I could combine these at two into just a single um, copy and rotation constraint. Uh, early on, before I got the drivers right, I was you know, using that to fix some of the deforms, and uh, this is just kind of left over. I may at some point find out there's a reason that I need to separate these two influences a bit more. Um, uh, if that ever happens, I will, uh, well, I'll just do it at that point. Uh, so the, the main thing that we care about, though, is the drivers. So uh, first, the easy part, the um, gluteus inside bone has absolutely no constraints, no drivers. It's just a child of the main gluteus, and so that, as I mentioned earlier, is only because I hate weight painting. I like auto weight. I like setting my uh, mesh to be auto weight to the armature, and this helps extend the influence of this bone to the inner side of her uh, gluteus. I'll have a bone that does the same thing for the outer side of the gluteus. So uh, what does the gluteus do? It changes its y location. Y location is along its long axis here. So it changes its y location with this formula. And as I hinted earlier, I don't completely remember what this formula is. All I remember is that, um, in several of the constraints, I needed to keep track of the x rotation of the thigh. And then I'm doing some stuff with that with a max of zero. Now, I, I can, I'm pretty sure what is happening here is this is causing it to come away from her body when her leg is back, but not go way up into her body when her leg is forward. I'm pretty sure that's what that is about, because the x rotation of her thigh is when it's coming forward you know, into her chest or back. It's like not the splits, right? So the splits are going to be z rotation. So the x rotation is this forward and back. And so, um, that means that the you know the y location of this wants to be changed a bit because of that, and also because of the uh, just the delta between the thigh and the hip. So what this means is, if it is rotating on x, it's also going to have this delta between the hip joint and the thigh. Like this angle will increase, and this x uh, rotation will increase. And so both of these, as her uh, leg is coming forward, will contribute to this formula to you know get this final value of what is happening to y. And so I guess we can kind of look at this and see what's happening to y location. It's only changing like by 0.01. But if I recall correctly, if I grab this and then put her legs all the way back like that, and then click that gluteus muscle, uh, yeah, 0.02. So it's double. Uh, it's changing double its uh, distance when her leg is back and when it's forward. But I think z is the more important because Z is getting moving in again, towards her thigh or away from her thigh. The Z right now is moved by 0.04 meters. Like, that's a lot, right? That's, uh, that's several centimeters back, right? Um, and this uh, expression actually is very similar to that other one. Uh, instead of multiply by negative one, it isn't. But, you know, it's the same basic idea. We're catching the X rotation of her thigh and the uh, angle between her thigh and hip. And again, uh, that hip never moves. It, it is your constant thigh thing that moves. And so that's the thing that contributes to this angle. Okay, so let's look at that driver again at 0.04 when her legs are back like that. Um, if I take her legs and put them forward again, where's my fake FA bone right there? Um, turn it up like this. Grab her gluteus muscle again. Z, 0.02. So, yep, as it, it only comes forward, 0.02, it went out, 0.04. And so it does move both directions because as her, as her thigh comes up here to touch her chest, that gluteus muscle gets really stretched and, um, and compressed. And so, um, you know, this movement makes it you know, look proper from you know, all kinds of different angles. And so, the other thing that's happening is the scale. So the X scale, you can see, has gone up. That's right and left. And so what we find is that the scale, that we scale up on the X whenever her gluteus, or whenever her thigh is all the way over here, therefore the gluteus is being stretched like here, but also when uh, when she puts her leg back, as though her you know, gluteus muscle were doing the work of pulling her leg back, um, it will also change that X um, scale. So let me click that again. So as you see, X now is 1.07. It's a little bit bigger, not, uh, not as much. And so again, here's the formula. We only care about rotational difference in this case. We don't care about uh, whether the leg is forward or back. It turns out that the scaling of that we want to happen when she's doing the splints or when her leg is bent or you know, bent forward or bent back. <coughs> um, I don't, again, remember exactly why I put the formula like this, uh, but you can probably copy this formula that started with this as a uh, rule of um, rule of ass to see if it looks good on your character and then try some, you know, moving it around, changing it, making it different values uh, to see if it'll um, be better. So the final thing is the scale of the Y axis. Again, we care about the rotational difference as one minus that. So like it, in this case is scaled down when her leg is rotated back like this. It'll be scaled up when her leg is rotated forward, which if you think about it, it makes sense, right? It's kind of what the gluteus is going to be doing when these things happen. Let's make sure I'm right. Um, it is actually scaled down when she does that. Okay, well then, uh, I guess I was wrong. Um, and that would be uh, why it's fun to watch my channels because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So then um, this 
does conclude every major bone. There's a couple minor ones in here. There's like a tailbone here, which kind of, uh, again, I don't do weight painting, so this catches some of the uh, geometry here to keep it from being affected by the hips. Then I have like uh, the deforming bone below that. This is actually something that goes out to here, um, and that's what everything is a uh, child of, and so if I want to make it you know, bigger or smaller, that's something I'm sizing. Everything is a child of that. Uh, you probably, you may have noticed earlier when I said that the uh, hip joint doesn't have any constraints or doesn't move, you might have noticed there actually is a copy location. Uh, ignore that, we'll talk about that in the body sizing um, thing in the future, but the basic idea is when she's skinny, I want her hips to be uh, a little closer together, and when she's fat, I want her hips to be further apart. So that's uh, what that does there. There is another muscle, that, or excuse me, bone that is the parent of the gluteus. Uh, it's for moving the gluteus around, and um, I kind of cheated and put some more of the uh, copying rotation here. This, I believe, is an error because uh, this, these bones are co-located, so I should be able to take this influence of this bone and put it into the gluteus itself, and I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So uh, just pay a, just note that uh, you, if you had exactly this character and exactly this you know, set of drivers and exactly these constraints for this bone, it wouldn't quite move that way because there's a little bit more uh, copy rotation from this bone. There is copy rotation, but there is no driver on it. You can see there's uh, zero driver. So really, it's this gluteus bone that is the craziest and most confusing one. So I'm going to look one more time at these um, drivers and the, the formulas that go into them so that you can kind of you know peruse them at your discretion and uh, you know try them out yourself and see what, what they do. Um, I really wish I could say more about how these work. Um, I, I really did do these myself. I didn't find them from a tutorial or, a tutorial or anything. But the way I work is I very much uh, I pick something that I think might look good, then I keep tweaking it in different ways until it looks better and better in many different poses. And once everything kind of looks good in several poses, I move on to another bone. As these other bones start messing up this one, so I kind of come back and tweak them. And eventually, it kind of looks good in all the different poses. Then I just forget about it because it's like, all right, that's already taken care of. I don't have to think about that anymore. So that is the hip rig, and hopefully, it, uh, hopefully you learned something, and maybe you can uh, comment or uh, say something to people, maybe ask questions. But if you happen to know um, kind of what's going on with these drivers, it wouldn't hurt to comment and help the world. All right, everyone, goodbye.